What's up everyone, welcome back. Moving on to the next topic, we're now gonna talk about hypothesis testing for a mean in this video, and actually over the next couple of videos. I'm gonna be doing a bunch of different examples, so now we're gonna start getting more and more technical. And before we get into the examples, I want to mention one more thing that you gotta be on the lookout for that's gonna depend what kind of hypothesis testing you do. And it's actually related to something we had to look for when we dealt with confidence intervals. So I'm gonna do a quick review here. So when we had confidence intervals, remember we are looking for two things. We are looking for whether we knew the population standard deviation or whether we didn't. And if we knew the population standard deviation, then we use the Z distribution. And if we didn't know the uh, population standard deviation, we use the T distribution. Or T distributions in plural, right? Because there were different distributions for different degrees of freedom, depending on that sample size. Well, the exact same thing is actually going to happen with hypothesis testing. So you're either going to know, either in the question, the population standard deviation is going to be given or it's not going to be given. Now, most cases, most questions are going to be based on this. You're going to have to use a t-distribution, but some questions you will get the population standard deviation being known you're gonna to have to use the Z distribution. And so, to get a little bit more specific related to hypothesis testing, basically, when the standard deviation is known, we're gonna be doing a Z test. And what that basically means is that the test statistic that you calculate I mentioned in previous videos general, uh, generally what a test statistic is, but we're going to calculate it in the next couple of videos. I'm going to show you how to do it. So the test statistic that you calculate is going to be based on the Z distribution. So basically the acceptance and rejection regions are going to be on a Z distribution and then that test statistic is going to go on that same distribution. You're going to see are you going to reject the null or fail to reject it. And then if it's unknown, if the population standard deviation is unknown, then it's called the t-test. And so that test statistic is based on a t-distribution. And remember there are multiple t-distributions. It's going to depend on the degrees of freedom and the degrees of freedom depends on the sample size. It's actually the sample size minus one. Right? So there's a bunch of things to consider. Right? From the previous video I told you you got to look at questions, see whether it's a one-tailed versus two-tailed test. Well, you also got to look for this. Do you know the population standard deviation or do you not? because the distribution that you're going to use is going to be different. So there's a lot to look for in these questions and that's going to affect the hypothesis testing. But anyway, we're going to do a bunch of examples and I'm going to specifically show you what each example is giving us and how we're going to go about it. Now, one thing I want to mention is that there may be like another preliminary step here, depending on your prof, depending on your textbook. Basically, sometimes before even getting to this decision, there may be something like you got to check is the population normally distributed, for example. Or another checkpoint might be is the sample size greater than 30. And sometimes these would even be split up. So you'll have like, is the population normally distributed? And then from there, is the sample size less than 30 or is it greater than 30? And then from there, you have this decision uh, checkpoint. So make sure that you adjust this depending on what your prof wants. But 
when I'm talking about this here, I'm assuming that we've passed those checkpoints. So population is either normally distributed or assumed to be normally distributed, or the sample size is greater than 30. And then at that point, you're just checking, do you know the population standard deviation or do you not? And then also, are you dealing with a one-tailed versus two-tailed test? But as I mentioned, we'll show that in the next example.